it's no surprise as you see it all the time on the Pac-12 Networks. We'll see you next time. Great to have everybody joining us after having watched Cal defeat UCLA in men's soccer. Welcome to Seattle, Washington, Husky Soccer Field and shots. Krista Blunk as number four Stanford is in town to face the hometown Huskies in a very important Pac-12 women's soccer match. This is a big match for Stanford. You've separated yourself a bit at the top. You are undefeated, and it is tough to get tr wins out on the road. Yep. And if you get this win, you have definitely separated yourself. But there's still a few matches, three left on the season for these teams. But that's enough to potentially hurt a team if you don't take care of business. And for Washington, you know that if you get this win, you have three matches. And, and they're not going to be easy ones by, by any means. They have to go to Oregon State and Oregon, and then right. they finish up with Washington State. But you have put yourself in a great position, and it's, it's definitely not Stanford's title just yet. Heck no. I mean, USC's only one back in the loss column. Yeah. And the Huskies, with that victory over Cal, feel like they're still in the mix, too. But they've got to beat Stanford if they're going to have anything to say about a conference championship. And that's still a bit of a long shot for the Huskies. It absolutely is. And then you, you have to wonder, how will the teams finish up? And we'll, we'll talk more about RPIs and kind of where these yeah. teams sit. How many teams do we think will make it to the NCAA tournament? And uh, there's still enough matches that if teams can go on a roll, it, it'll make a difference. Stanford, a very good front-running club. Washington knows that and would love to get on the board early. Perez, such a great quarterback in that midfield. The main focus this week for Stanford and Paul Radcliffe's team, possession. They are such a possession-style team, but quality of passing. They do not hand the ball over very much. They are so good with the ball at their feet, but also just the composure and finishing. Just those little things that make a difference. But they will work it through the back. They will work it from flank to flank. And they spread teams out better than almost any team out there. And that's similar to what Leslie Gallimore and the Washington Huskies want to do. You bet. Then the question is, who will control the midfield? Who can work it through? And right now the Huskies trying to do that. So Washington has Kufeld back, minding the nets. She had to sit because of that straight red card. Sarah Scheimer making her debut the other night against Cal. Not only has a moment to remember, a night to remember with the win, but she also has the clean sheet. So she's waiting in the wings. But how critical is it for Washington and Gallimore to have Kufeld back in the starter role? Well, she's a redshirt senior. That The confidence and how they feel with her back there, it's not to take anything away from Sarah Scheimer. The, the team was behind her. And that's exactly what Coach Gallimore said but when you have the captain when you have a longtime veteran keeper like Megan Kufeld it's just a different feel she's been back there her entire career all over the record books for the Huskies yeah I mean Scheimer has identified herself as somebody they can absolutely count on but make no mistake Kufeld is still the number one keeper and she is back between the pipes so we're scoreless early in this match sixth minute Little things will be important. It's a wet turf. There are muddy areas in front of Kufeld, you see her there, and in front of Campbell on the other end in those six-yard boxes. Little things become very important in a wet match. They definitely do, and, and, and it, it's all it takes in a match like this. We are seeing across the board every match now in Pac-12 play, teams just kind of beating up on each other and very close matches. Very rarely do you see any team beating anybody by more than one goal. That ball not cleared in the danger area and finally booted out of the way. Set pieces, corners, rebounds. It'll be interesting to see which team can jump on opportunities or maybe a mistake or two. Stanford inside the 18, looking to finish. There's Kufeld coming off that line and laying out for that one. Well, it's an impressive and experienced back line that, that goes with Megan Kufeld and a couple of her teammates in particular, Mackenzie Karras, as well as Allison Braz, two seniors, their center back anchors. So veteran leadership. You know, we got a chance to talk to Amy Griffin, the associate head coach for the Huskies, and she said, we're shocked when something gets past the two of them yeah. to even give Kufeld an opportunity to play back there because they are so good. So Stanford's really going to have to take care of it and work it around. And now we see the Huskies doing the same thing, multiple passes. Neither team getting into rhythm quite yet. It might take a little while 
to do just that on this wet pitch. Again, the rain's coming down, high 50s. These kids can run all day, but the wet turf could be a factor at some point. I think, I think it definitely will be. And the Cardinal have not faced a lot of scenes like this yep. from the Bay Area, not getting much rain over the, over the uh, season. Big focus for the Huskies this week. They worked on their team defense. It was something that coming off of last week's loss against Arizona State, they knew they would need it against Cal and then in this one against Stanford. But in particular, the transition for them and quickly transitioning offense to defense and not getting caught, but defensively not taking time off. The ball goes out, don't just stand around, do something. And where the Huskies really, I think, improved between the Arizona State and Cal game was the fact that their defense, they locked and loaded on defense, but offensively they were able to control the midfield when they had to. They spread the field the way they wanted to, and they gave themselves scoring opportunities, which were, was not the case against Arizona State. Different club. Yeah, you're, you're right. You know, that's what you hope. If you're Leslie Gallimore, that's what you want your team to do. You want to see that improvement between match and match. Yeah, you'd love to have a W, but it's not always about the W or the loss. It's about how are we improving as we go along. I'd say both of these coaches will tell you the same thing, and they they had uh, the advantage in corners against Cal, the advantage in shots. They put themselves in position and they got the win. That's a, it's a great point. And in that game, Gallimore used five subs. Ratcliffe, in that double overtime victory against Wazoo, used six subs. These Sunday games are always really tough, and they can tell you a lot coming off of hard-fought Friday uh, matches. Yeah, we'll see a lot of fresh legs out there. Bad, uh, baby. Both, both coaches will be going to the sidelines. And Stanford thinking that they had the corner. Tegan McGrady, but right there with her, Dominique Bonds Flasha, the sophomore, not allowing her to make contact, and they get it back. McGrady, one of the freshmen on the Stanford club, just immediate impact kind of a kid. Number one ranked. Ooh, there's a mistake right there, but Browse got away with it. Number one freshman class in the country, and they have not disappointed. We have watched them go from freshmen getting their legs to playing like veterans by this point of the season. Well, the young players, as we see Tegan McGrady, and this player stands out to me almost more than any of the freshmen. She and Michelle Zhao, the number one recruit class in the nation. You How bet. about the sophomore class also being the number <laughs> yeah. one recruit class? So back-to-back yep. -back top recruit classes, and we shouldn't be surprised that 20 of the 28 goals on the season, they've been scored by freshmen and sophomores. Morris. Unbelievable. When yeah. you look at their underclassmen, and that's why to me, you, you, you mentioned how critical Rosen is, because no matter what, you still need the juniors and seniors in there to be that on-the-field leader, uh, that element, and but the, the mix is just incredible for Stanford. It really is because they have Alana Cook back on the back line, but she has veterans next to her, and so the experience she gains now as a starter is going to make a difference next year for her when she doesn't have those same seniors by her. Stanford has been getting the ball into their offensive third, but near that 18, the Huskies' defense has denied them any kind of quality opportunity. But here is Stanford again. I love that ball. Ooh, boy, you know Stanford was looking for a penalty. That body went down in a hurry. Wow, there was some contact, and you don't hear a whistle go, and definitely clipped there, and it looked like it was Kira Carusa, a redshirt freshman, and it was yep. number 12 for the Cardinal, and she cannot believe it, begging for a whistle and doesn't get it. Boy, that would have been a a blow to the Huskies if they had given up a PK this early in this one, but they don't. It goes in their favor. Hedge in a foot race there. Flag goes up and we'll go the other way. How about the ground that Stephanie Amack covers for the Cardinal yeah. there getting back and cutting that off? She was completely over on the right flank and trying to score moments ago, and now she's back on the left cutting off the attack of the Huskies. And watch Amac to go box to box. I mean, she will She's, cover yeah. a ton of real estate. She definitely does. Both of these teams will bring and work it through their back, and they will allow them to give them the green light to build it and move it forward and come up. And the question will be, and this is what the Huskies didn't have potentially really against Arizona State, but they did better against Cal, was who controls that midfield right. and can work it through. And with some dynamic 
runs and ball handling and control in that midfield too. Yes. It was present against Cal. And gosh, that was a fun match. Kiever with that game winner late in that thing. It had overtime written all over it until Kiever came up big to compliment Scheimer in her debut. When we get into this part of of conference play it is my favorite time of the year because everybody's starting to click a little bit and you start to see some of the best soccer in the nation and the healthy clubs really separate themselves too this is a stanford team that has been able to stay relatively healthy and washington as well they had some injuries preseason, but these are two relatively or mostly healthy clubs and that's huge in mid-October. It definitely is and all of the coaches tell you that early on when you're talking with them well if we stay healthy yeah. they know how yeah. it'll change everything if they lose any particular players and these these squads have done a nice job with their conditioning and and they've also talked about how it's been a bigger focus for their student athletes in the offseason to come in be stronger be in better condition and it's it's really paying off. Just a great crowd on hand you can see the stands full despite the fact that it's kind of rainy and yucky in Seattle it didn't matter everybody brought their umbrellas or at least brought their gear and off we go says a lot about this program here in Seattle with for the Huskies also though and what they are building and the culture and how they are involved in the community that is very important to Leslie Gallimore and her staff and this team and they've come out and I give them love a lot it. of credit love it Gallimore also represented as Villanueva gets a little chatting too. Gallimore making that all-century club. What a stud yeah. she was at Cal. And, and to remind you, Ratcliffe named the coach of the century. Man. Well, and you know, Leslie Gallimore in her 22nd season, you know, she's the longest tenured, and this yep. is great positioning right here for Stanford, and Oh, and a bender right there. Dangerous. Wow, it just eluded the head of a couple of Stanford players as Kufield wasn't able to go out and get that thing, and it bounces safely out of harm's way. Yeah, it looked like AMAC might have been the best target. There was a bit of a wall of Huskies that got in her way just slightly, a boy flying in out of nowhere, and she just couldn't quite get there. Haley Rosen, of course, was in the mix. Yep, in the vicinity. Uh-huh, yeah. And that was a tough ball for Kufel to read, and it just missed getting real interesting in the muck in that six yard area so we've seen the cardinal make their way into their attacking third we haven't seen jane campbell tested just yet on the other side and so for the huskies they need to start finding a way to move this ball forward and it's something they really worked on they talked about reading what the defense gives you knowing when to pull back knowing when to push forward and finding the gaps washington quite frankly hasn't had the ball much at all and have it, you know, the, the Huskies haven't been able to do anything with it. Yeah. This has been Stanford in terms of good field position in their offensive third, to your point. You have to play clean. You have to play your cleanest game. You have to take care of the ball because that is exactly what Stanford will do. They're not just going to hand it over to you very much. We're not seeing the Huskies come up in pressure. They're not taking too many chances with their pressure, so they're really matching up midfield on. Boy, you're absolutely right, and this is a great indication of it right here. Yeah, just giving that back line, yep. letting them work it through, yep. but then they're going to collapse in, trying not to give up anything midfield. Here's McIlvain, just boots it out of bounds so her defense can get organized. But again, it's Stanford in its offensive third and inside that 18, dangerous there. And that's just a clearance. Stanford's pushing forward a little higher than the Huskies definitely are, pressuring a bit more as Laura Lytle's trying to find. Don't pull the plug on any <laughs> of our cameras or anything, kid. What a great player Laura Lytle is. She's one of 30 student athletes up for the Senior Class Award, and that's an award given for not only what they do on the pitch, but what they do Man. off the field as well. And she's just a, just a great teammate. Mm. Starter since day one is, yeah. is Lytle. You know, she, she knows she's not going to get all the pub because she plays defense. But the work rate, the minutes, that quiet technical leader, gee whiz. Paul Radcliffe has said about Laura Lytle, she inspires with her work ethic. And she stands out to her teammates because of how hard she works. And it's contagious. Lytle is one of those free spirits on this Stanford team. Didn't play uh, 
high school soccer. I think she was on the high school surf yeah. team. She, I mean, what the she heck? had other things going on. Yeah, I guess so. Hang 10, baby. I love it. <laughs> Out of San Diego, you had yeah, to be on I the surf you. team. I think she's with the Stanford Surf Club, too. Yeah. That's in her blood, that's for sure. She's definitely a calming kind of player. I think that says a lot about just her personality, and that's a good thing out there sometimes. One of those seniors that we're talking about, and here comes Stanford again. You know, Krista, I think Washington's going to have to be very, very careful in terms of where they commit some of these fouls very close to those happening in the penalty area. This is a great run of play, but right at Kufel, oh, off her mitts, and she's able to clutch it again on that second hop. That play started with Andy Sullivan in the middle. In the middle. She has amazing footwork mm. with the ball at her feet, but she is a great assist player. She's so unselfish, and she finds her teammate in Kufel. Now you're wondering, is the rain going to affect anything with the ball? How slippery is the ball? Kufeld tested mm. it out, little pop on that one. Yep, that ball was on a string for Sullivan. Just a sophomore is Andy. Best freshman in the country last year. Some folks think she's the best player in the country, period, this year. Yeah, that was her again, and you can see they're giving it to her. She's looking around, yep. and she's surprised there isn't a double team or a triple team. And then, okay, which of my teammates is open now? And that's where I think Andy Sullivan needs to say, okay, I think I'm going to take it. I mean, Sullivan is a scoring threat. Yeah. She's got the five goals to go along with two assists. Last year, it was the other way around where more assists came than goals. But I'm with you. I want her pulling that trigger from there, too. Yeah, and she can. She's got the leg to do it. That's you just bet. how unselfish she is. Sometimes maybe too much. Far post. I love the service. Still collecting, though. Stanford keeps it right where they want it. It was a nice idea, and I think that was McGrady. And I, I believe she was maybe trying to draw some contact. Yeah, it is. Trying to draw some contact, doesn't get it, and goes far left of the goal. Hit the side netting, and it's a good chance to see the steady rains coming down in Seattle here in the 19th minute. Scoreless at Husky Soccer Field. And shots along with Krista Blunk. Delighted to have you with us. Stanford, in terms of possession, has owned this match so far. Now we see the Huskies come up just a little bit, and I know it's tough because look how far and the width and, the, and how well Stanford spreads teams out, and it's so tough to come out in pressure when they're that far apart and the spacing's there, but I think, I think the Huskies need to be a little more aggressive. So Stanford not letting anything easy come to McIlvain on this near flank, she gets doubled every time she touches the ball. Really the first time Keevers touched the ball. Yeah, we haven't even mentioned their name, and that's credit to the Stanford D. I think double teaming when they can. They trap every opportunity they can on the sides, and they just haven't allowed the Huskies to move it much past midfield. Stanford has given up but 10 goals, scoring 28. UW only having given up 12 goals, so those tallies will be at a premium today. Sullivan again, just so calm with the ball, finding open teammates. Again, stretching the field nicely. Clearance is there, but it, the ball just belongs to Stanford at this point, and you got to think it's just a matter of time. Well, and part of the reason why is that the Huskies had a throw-in, and they don't, they're not able to play it cleanly. The throw-in was not quite as accurate as they need it to be, and they just hand it over, and Stanford is going to play more accurately and hang on to it longer. Beautiful strip there. Von Flasha playing the defense, but again, Stanford just kind of keeps on coming, finding a way to control into open areas. A little hard with the touch there, a little firm. But that was Bond Flasher that created even this chance right here. She's the one that made that happen. Just a little extra pressure, and you see what happens. I'm wondering if, if perhaps Leslie has them pulling up a little higher on the defense. Yeah, we weren't seeing white jerseys this far up yep. uh, just a bit ago, and now they are. And now into the open area. Here comes Stanford again. A lot of spacing out there, though, for the Cardinal. They're just very patient, and it's a, right there, Sullivan. 
And she's got the leg. Just got it. a little too much pitch under that one. Well, but she was listening to you saying, yes. hey, you That's know what? <laughs> if you've got the real estate and there's nobody there, pull the trigger, baby. Uh. Yeah, nobody in front of her. I've seen her a couple of times now looking to her left and right, and there hasn't been anybody there and deciding to give it up. And instead, that time, decides to take it. Maybe could have even gone just a little bit further. Sullivan and Campbell on the Herman Trophy watch list. That was, you know, the preseason stuff came out, and you knew those two were naturals and have been so solid for Ratcliffe. Yeah, Andy Sullivan out of Virginia. And he got her to come all the way yep. to the West Coast, the number one recruit in the nation coming in last season. And she was the Pac-12 Freshman of the Year and Soccer America and Top Drawer Freshman of the Year. Bet. A lot of pressure as a top recruit, but came yeah, in, yeah. didn't let it bother her one bit. Seamless. So scoreless here in the 23rd minute. This is the deepest we've seen Washington in Stanford territory this match. Better spacing by the Huskies here. They've really spread it out. And there's that double team, an opportunity to trap. There's the pressure by Stanford. Boy, that was just a beautiful service inside to Kiever and Campbell coming way off her line to deny. Excuse me, that's Hedge. What an advantage. Jane Campbell has great size in the box. It's really the first time we've seen her challenged, and that's something she worked on now in her junior season. She's a veteran now on this young team, and it's the, the decision-making. When do I go out? When do I need to slide and dive? What should I do in this situation? And she's reading things so much quicker. Her numbers are so impressive in conference play, too. Obviously, one of the Pac-12's finest. But that last sequence for Washington offensively was exactly what they need to do and, and that was actually a quality opportunity inside that 18. You're right they kept it out wide and then they brought it back across and it's moving without the ball you they bet. need players moving you mentioned Kelsey Hedge a very very talented freshman for the Huskies. And on that double the movement without the ball is key isn't it yeah. Krista? It is because somebody has space and somebody's open. You've got to read it, and that's what they worked on. Again, what's the defense giving us, and what do we need to do? And it doesn't matter where Washington receives the ball on the pitch. That trap is right there. That double is right there. Very hard to replicate these situations, though. And you know, Paul Radcliffe talked about that with us yep. before this weekend, and he said it's tough to do that, to, to get yourself in these real game situations. You don't have a f another full 11 that's playing at maybe at the same level to go up against your 11. So you break it down into smaller groups. You put them into situations, and, and you hope that when those situations come up in the game, they recognize it. So specific drills, like yeah. you said, and, and specific things that help you in the finishing department because you can't replicate it. You're yeah. absolutely right, and he was very quick to point that out. Big hop there, headed nicely to Kufeld. smart play. So on Thursday, I want to remind you, women's soccer, the game of the week, heads to the farm. Fourth-ranked Stanford plays host to USC. Number one against number two. Thursday at 7 o'clock on Pac-12 Network or watch on Pac-12 Now and Pac-12.com. And depending on tonight's outcome, mm. you know, if, if Washington's able to steal one, Oh, that just makes Thursday's game even more fun. It definitely does. A USC team that is playing very, very well. Beautiful ball inside the 18. Kiefer! She had enough on that one that if it starts to tail down, there's nothing Jane Campbell can do. Sometimes this is the way... Mm. Teams have an opportunity to score. Kimberly Kiever saw it, just had enough of an opening, a deflection, and sometimes that's what it takes against a team like Stanford. Where if that one starts to go down up and over Jane Campbell, nothing she could do. You see the five goals for Kiever, including that game winner against Cal in the 87th minute the other night. Here's the corner. McIlvain. Tough break. Not what you wanted to see right there. As you just have to take that one extra breath and settle yourself down on that one because that was excellent positioning. And she's got a good leg, but got underneath that one, did not have a chance. She also had some teammates in position that could have helped her out. You bet. Kiever letting that fly was Washington's best chance. Perez with the back heel kind of swung and missed on that, but Kiever was right there. 
And here's Kufeld waving everybody off. Karras was there just in case. No sweat for Kufeld. I think a good sign just to see the Huskies make it into their attacking third. Sometimes you get a shot like that, and that's where you settle yourself down. You get a little confidence out of this one, and you can try to emulate what you just did. You bet. And this game's so goofy, you know, you, you can possess all you want, and you can dominate run of play, but yet you can find yourself on the wrong end of the score in a heartbeat. <laughs> you can. It's usually a little deflection here sure. or there, one little mistake. And Kiever's obviously, you know, feeling the hot hand, kind of like Rosen or a Sullivan or a Shaw. I mean, it, it, it's, it's who really thinks to themselves, you know, why not me? I'm feeling good. Give me the ball around the box and, and I'll do something with it. Yeah, she's kind of a fearless kind of player, Kimberly Kiever is. Another opportunity, a little miscommunication there. But Stanford still controlling in their offensive third. Here's Sullivan. I'm expecting Zhao to get in the mix at some point, too. She's been one of those freshmen that you can't take your eye off of. She's been incredibly quiet so far yeah. in this half. Very patient cardinal attack. And the combination play is brilliant. Tough, tough. Go to the left save by Kufeld. Probably the most touches that we've seen. That was an excellent possession by the cardinal. But Kufeld. This is Jordan DiBiase with the left and just a little too much pitch underneath that one. It slowed it down and Kufeld able to grab it. You see the patience of this Stanford attack setting teammates up, teammates up nicely for really good opportunities. It is probably the thing that stands out the most to me about Stanford and what they do. It's amazing how patient they are and just how accurate they are. A lot of pride in the little things. Yep. And you can't double up on one, two, three, or four players. They're going to get 10 or 11 kids at, uh, well, 9 or 10 kids anyway, that potentially can score. Yeah. Campbell saying, well, what about me? I scored in the NCAA playoffs last year. I'm potential. <laughs> oh, look at that slip through. And Kufeld all went off the line. Oh, my goodness. The defense saving the day as Kufeld comes up to snuff the shot. But off the line defensively, the heroics are there. If the help defense does not get back, this oh. one's going to the back of the net. Bob Flasha. And I mean just getting a little boot on that at the very end. Wow. Dominique Bon Flasha just saved a score right there because Kufeld had to come out. She had to challenge. She had nobody there in between. She's thinking, my teammates got to be behind me, and they were. That's exactly how you practice it. And again, Stanford maintaining the pressure with quality chances. Wow. The Husky defense earning rave reviews after what they did against Cal to present and nail down the clean sheet. But wow, that was a spectacular save by Bon Flasha. Just great communication. And now a corner mm. for the Cardinal. Yeah, let's look at this effort by this sophomore. This is how you draw it up. Kufeld has to come out because she's one-on-one. -on -one. She's got to stop the angle. And that's where the D drops back and tries to protect the goal to help out their keeper. And she does. You know, and Bon Flasha had to do a little quick step there to make sure she got a foot on that thing. Dangerous corner. It was wonderful to see Karis, the senior, slap hands with Bon Flasha saying, yeah. yep. The four of us, the four of us will work in tandem and we'll get the job done. Bon Flasha, McIlvain, Braz, and Karras. One of the best back lines in the conference. Can't say enough about what they do. Easy call to make there. And again, a very creative, clever Stanford club forcing the issue. And Rosen with a beautiful move. She's so technical. Crosses this one over, leads herself out just enough, and then gets clipped. And great positioning for the Cardinal with this free kick. Yep, Simon got her, no doubt about it. And this is danger zone. Scoreless here in the 31st minute, but perhaps not for long. Stanford has been knocking at the door. Here we go. Kufeld punches it on that near post. 
So trying to go ahead and take it on her own. That was Tegan McGrady. She's a natural lefty. They've worked on a variety of different set pieces, and I wasn't sure if she was just going to be the dummy that ran across and, and left the play, and instead she takes it and bends it, and Kufeld had to be ready. Kufeld has had a couple of shot attempts bounce off the mitts where she's been able to gobble it up. And we'll play on as players collide and a Stanford player slow to get up. Little crowd reaction with yeah. that collision and... Mm. Looks like McGrady down on her knees. I hate to see that happen. Tegan McGrady, the freshman out of San Jose, California. And she went out in a match a few weeks ago and then came back the next time. Actually came back late in the second half. And I hope this is just something minimal. She's catching her breath right yeah. now. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, that's what we've got here. Yikes. Wow, that is a wow. lot of... And there, I don't know if there was even a whistle on that, Ann. No, there wasn't. They, they just kept they playing. They played on. And the official right there. McGrady mm -hmm. will head to the sidelines. We're not going to even speculate as to what is going on, but at least she's under her own power. She's moving well. She's definitely... I think she got caught up in the jawline and yep. you name it, midsection. And uh, she's walking well, and that's a good sign. And big deep breath right there so good to see one of those dynamic freshmen that make up the number one recruited freshman class in the country and McGrady is going to be something special high school sprint star yeah her, her grandpa was a track and field star in the 40s for Stanford and the bloodlines are there baby how about growing up in San Jose California not too far yeah. away from Stanford and your grandfather went there and now you are a starter on this nationally ranked soccer team. That's cool stuff. Yeah. A team that could go deep into the playoffs, but that's a ways from now. <laughs> Tonight's what is crucial for both of these clubs. If we brought that up to Paul Radcliffe, uh, I don't he, even think he, I think he might hang up the phone. I was going to say, <laughs> he'd say next caller and hang up so fast. Uh, yeah. We're not going to get five minutes ahead, no. much less playoff stuff. Oh, a little too much. There's a great sign right there. There's yeah, Tegan she's McGrady. Back. Yeah. Hopefully, just the wind knocked out of mm -hmm. her just a little bit, and that one. And they wonder if the the if the rain had something to do with that one. That ball was skidding quite a bit, and they let her up, and there was a lot on it, but still, it took a big skid, and went out. Yeah. So the rains have returned to the Seattle area. Temperature in the high 50s, rain off and on, and when it's been down, coming down, it's been steady. Wind's not a factor, but this wet turf certainly is. You gotta be careful here. Oh boy, I'm not sure if that was a lack of communication or what, but Kufeld really had to come up and boot that thing out of the way. Spot kick area looked there for the taking for Stanford. Yeah, at the last minute, one of Kufeld's back line players kind of let that ball go, and I was surprised. I couldn't hear the communication, but what we do know, it results in a corner kick, and again, a set-piece opportunity for the Cardinal. Far post. And again... Washington just clears it into the open space, and Stanford will, will reload. Yeah, and this is where you have to be ready, is the counter by the Cardinal. Kufeld was. Braz was right there with her, but you're right. A good read by Kufeld. You just can't take any chances inside that 18 on this wet turf. No, you definitely can't. She's getting a workout. <laughs> she is. After sitting the last match out, probably glad she got a breather coming into this one. McGrady showing that sprint speed. Let's see if Washington get, can get something going on the counter. Nope. A little bit of higher pressure by Washington. Helps to create the turnover into space. Beautifully played, but there's Stanford's defense. No problem. 
it forced that longer pass and because of that pressure it was almost a complete turnover but it also now forces Stanford to start over again but you're right the pressure created that I like it and I think sometimes it just takes a little bit to feel out a team and figure out okay can we pressure them or not uh, if you're if you're not quite sure if you're gonna come up or not and I think they figured out hey I think we can Dume Neal in the Washington lineup by the way one of the first subs off the bench for Gallimore. You get the feeling that Stanford is just waiting for one of those back passes to Kufeld to be a little soft. Yeah. And they're just they're just kind of hanging, waiting in the wings. They are. weeds. That's how look how high up they are. Yes. They are right there. You make one mistake and they pounce. It's going to be absolutely imperative for Perez and Simon to keep things steady at that midfield and create these kinds of opportunities. There's Hedge. It's a foot race here. Hedge double teamed, but the run was really good. You speak of impressive freshmen. You're looking at one right there, number 10. She is phenomenal. This is a player. She was the Idaho Gatorade Player of the Year, and the number 13 freshman coming in and so talented and, yeah. uh, you know she's she admitted that it's been a little more difficult than she thought it would you come out of this stellar high school career and then club play and then you come in at this level and it's been tough for her to get the score but three goals two assists and she's kind of glad she's got the teammate she does around her corner washington will control villanueva that's a beautiful ball and just Unable to get the foot on it is Perez. I love the idea. The service was perfect. Just a little too high for Perez to yep. go with the header here. If someone else is coming in and could have gotten underneath this. Wow, what a play. Great effort, though, by Amanda Perez. And a beautiful service from her teammate with that cross. Villanueva, you could tell with the head up, was looking for a dynamic run. And Perez gave it to her inside that six. That's the closest that Washington has come and that comes in the 37th minute so we're still scoreless I think a handball yep. on that one so let's see if there's a quick restart by Stanford yeah Lytle runs right up uh-huh you're not kidding here she <laughs> is this has been a really fun match with Stanford trying to get the scoring opportunities to knock the door down and boy, off the side netting, you know, the vantage point for a second there, you're thinking, did that find a yeah. home? But off the side netting. The crowd would have let yes. us all know yes. if they had or they didn't. But this is a beautiful service up and good movement mm. away from the ball. And I think it was McGrady again tries the header. But good defense as they took away the angle for her just at the last second. How many times have we called McGrady's name? And yeah. she has been all over the field on both planks middle of the pitch she has been a force so far she is really a special athlete and I've enjoyed watching her play and and she was coming in off the bench early on yes. in the season and she's yes. worked her way as a starting role because she's just playing so well that's something that I think is great about Paul Radcliffe and, and what he does with the Stanford program if you are the best player through practice time you get to play you're going to get playing time and you know as a, as a student athlete on his team that that's the way it is yeah. and you've got a chance to play and if you're not playing you have to be able to accept it and somehow he gets these amazing recruit classes to buy into that there's Paul Ratcliffe coach of the century in Pac-12 play <laughs> that is pretty cool yeah you can't say enough about what he's done oh my goodness national championship yep. in 2011 but just getting to the college cup seven times six in the last seven Unbelievable. years yeah last year losing to Florida State in the semifinals what a great run they had and the fact that they've re reloaded after graduating so many impactful seniors is to me the tip of the cap testimony to coach Radcliffe yeah they graduated five to six starters yeah. as seniors and you know not just seniors but they were true oh, starters man. and uh, but you know Washington as well let's not forget that it was Stanford that knocked them out of the NCAA tournament last year Washington one of the 
uh, nine teams that made it to the NCAA tournament and in the third round had to go to Stanford where Stanford doesn't lose very often and it was a good one but the Cardinal too much. Great match. Yeah. one nothing. Cardinal win it in the Sweet 16. So we're looking at two of the Pac-12's finest. Yeah. And that hasn't dropped off this year. Stanford again. That's a beautiful ball. That back corner was just a little exposed, the back post. But again, Washington is somehow, some way able yeah. to clear. And I think if you're Stanford and, and you are Paul Ratcliffe's team, you're happy to have these opportunities, but you've got to start getting a little frustrated that you're not capitalizing on them as we're starting to see more fresh legs coming in. Anasini coming in for this Washington club. Anasini from Seattle, but went to Valparaiso and then transferred yep. after a couple of seasons, coming back and playing closer to home. Well, and, and hadn't played a whole lot, but then got the nod in a substitute role against Cal. Obviously, Gallimore liked what she saw, so back again in the first half in terms of a sub for the Huskies. There's the trap. Mm -hmm. and results in a turnover. Let's see if Washington can make something happen. Ah, the giveaway, though. Heads it the other way. 42nd minute, scoreless. You can see just a little bit of added pressure can cause the Cardinals some problems, but if they continue to spread it out and get their spacing and you, and you hold back on them, they're usually going to win that, that style of play. So a foot race there. And the Huskies will get organized. We're just moments away from the half, and Kate Rooney is standing by. Our good pal, Katie Rooney. All right, so USC stays hot, blanking the buffs. Bears edge the Cougars, and that controversial call in women's soccer between number one and number two. Katie will break that down, too. Yeah, I think if I'm the an official in that match you want to be and yet you don't want to be probably there's a lot of pressure on them in a match like that I'm pretty sure you don't want to be <laughs> I know I don't want to be yeah, heck no Forty third minute the wide attack by Stanford to stretch the field in the defense there's Mariah Lee she's checked in for the Cardinal again off the side netting we expect to see it's a good look at the 5'4 sophomore, Washington native, and that pretty much tells you what's going on yeah. in Seattle. Dry in the morning, relatively dry anyway, and mm -hmm. then that front came in and it just is kind of sitting there. Bringing us a bunch of rain in Seattle. But you know, the, the footing seems to be pretty good at this point. Yeah. There are the muddy areas in front of each keeper in that six in the respective six-yard boxes. But so far, the footing's been okay. Yeah, we haven't really seen them uh, struggling in that area as of yet, anyway. Stanford has just been relentless in their finishing third but not able to find the back of the net yet. The Huskies have only given up 12 goals. Stanford's given up 10 goals on the season, and the rain not bringing the band down. Heck no. <laughs> they give them some Gore-Tex gear and yeah. say, hey, get those trumpets ready. And it'll be interesting to see what both coaches have to say to their clubs at halftime. Mm -hmm. Defensively, both teams have been very good. I, I really like the attack of Stanford in terms of opportunities created. Well, we already saw a bit of a mid-change, a mid-half change by the Huskies by pulling the pressure up higher. Yes. And it'll be interesting to see if they can tweak it. It's just little things in a match like this that'll make a difference. And there there's a little we see footing. the footing. Yep, there <laughs> Don't we go see. to the sideline. There we see the footing. A quick throw in by Stanford trying to catch the Huskies napping. That's Ryan Walker Hartshorn. She's come in for the Cardinal. Good eyes partner and she's a good one. She could be a starter and has been at times and 
she's been a question mark for Paul Ratcliffe this year and putting her in the right combinations and figuring out it's nice mm -hmm. to have a spark like her coming in off the bench. I agree. It's a great, she's a great sub to have there. You hear away, away, and finally done. And Rosen was trying to draw contact and get the corner, and instead a player down for the Huskies. That's McIlvain. Mm. Mm, she's hurting. I'm glad to see her walking, though. Keep your eye on number eight. Yeah, maybe knock knees. It looks like Mariah Lee came flying in, and she's so powerful. She's feeling that one. Yep. Rain coming down hard in Seattle, no doubt about it. As McIlvain will make her way to the sideline with just seconds left to go in this half. So we'll watch McIlvain as the clock ticks down. And that'll do it for a scoreless first half in Seattle. Obviously Stanford ruling the run of play, but UW's defense pretty good in that final third. Yeah, I really think they kicked up the energy and the intensity, and I think that really turned it around and sort of evened out the half because it was dominated early on by the Cardinal. Maybe that's the place to be in that little jump up <laughs> deal. That's, that's where I want to be. There's a, there's a roof over that kid's head. Yeah. So a rainy one in Seattle, as you can see. And it's been a steady rain that doesn't look like it's going to let up anytime soon. But both of these teams have played very, very well in these conditions. We're tipping the cap to you too, band members. Yeah. Darn right. So Krista mentioned that Leslie Gallimore is the longest tenured coach in the Pac-12, and we're happy to have her join us. Leslie, uh, your take on the first half. Defensively, you've been tested, but true. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it, Ann, tested but true. Um, you know, the kids will hang their head a little bit because they pride themselves in being able to keep the ball, and we've been a pretty good team in possession so far this year. Um, so they'll hang their heads because they we haven't had the ball much. We haven't helped ourselves when we've won it. Um, but we're going to encourage them because I think they did a very good job defensively. We just have to keep it now when we get it. Stanford's pressure is good, and, um, but we're not helping ourselves on our first touch. We're not helping ourselves with our support off the ball to want it, to get it, and keep it a little bit more. So we'll talk about that um, going into the second half, and if we can continue need to defend this well but just be better in possession I think we can create some dangerous opportunities and we had a couple there towards the end you know Leslie it looked like the team was sagging off a little bit to start the match but then they started to come out with pressure and it allowed you to get into your attacking third a little bit more did you make that call or did they just start to come up and bring some energy they brought they just decided to bring a little bit of energy I think they're tired of chasing to be honest <laughs> um, you know Stanford was starting to feel a little bit more dangerous I think they woke up a little bit but we'll again we'll we'll talk about it at halftime what we need to do it really does revolve around trying to keep the ball in our first first one and two passes after we after we pick it off um, and and again play a little bit more in their end and continue to defend as well as we have they're, they're a dangerous team with a lot of a lot of weapons but if we can keep them to um, you know limited number of shots and, and opportunities from distance instead of letting them play in and around our 18 um, I like our chances Leslie thanks a bunch for taking the time always a well, pleasure hey That's Washington head coach Leslie to Gallimore Griffin. we're She's scoreless here today. in Seattle between fourth ranked Stanford and the hometown Huskies a lot of scoring opportunities for the Huskies, but I'll tell you, it's the defense of the Huskies that really stole the show. Scoreless at the halfway point in Seattle. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Rooney in San Francisco with your halftime report. Huskies hoping they can beat the Cardinal for the first time since 2004. Meanwhile, some other big matches already in the books. Let's get you caught up. First, to senior day at USC, Trojans riding a four game winning streak into this morning's match with Colorado ninth minute, no score. Mandy Freeman sending the long ball into the box. Savannah Levin there with the header. Trojans go up 1-0. Levin very happy. That was her first goal this season. 23rd minute. Trojans on the attack again. Sydney Sladek drawing a foul in the box. So the Trojans get a penalty kick. Morgan Andrews taking the kick and she would convert that one, putting USC up 2-0. That's Andrews again in the 51st minute. Her header good. Trojans win 
3-0. Up on the Palouse, 25 Washington State hosting 14 Cal this morning. Scoreless in the 46th minute here. Carol Wegner, the pass ahead to Courtney Gutlein. Courtney Gutlein dribbling all the way down. She's fouled in the box by Anya Meia. The ensuing penalty kick. Susie White taking it for the Cougs. This one is high. So we're still scoreless after a great chance for the Cougs. We'll take this one on to the 55th minute. Guess who? It's Arielle Ship with the pass to Carly Graff. Graff, the top shelfer from way out. Not bad for your first goal of the season, Carly Graff. The Bears win 1-0, their second road victory over a top 25 team this season. Senior days all over the Pac-12 today. This one in Tempe, Sun Devils hosting the Ducks. 25th minute, Mackenzie Simmerod taken down in the box, resulting in a penalty kick for the Sun Devils. Taking the shot for them is Callie Farkason. She makes it look easy. A 1-0 lead for ASU in the first half. We go on to the second, same score. As the ball is knocked out of bounds, there's Lucy Lara delivering an elbow. That's a red card, folks. So the Sun Devils would finish the game with 10 players, but that proved to be all they would need. Chandler Morris doing her part with a save in the 89th minute. Score would hold at 1-0. ASU's won three straight in conference play. But how's about a non-conference matchup? The nation's top two teams, certainly worth a look. Number two, Virginia hosting top-ranked Florida State. This one, some controversy after that shot off the post. And Kristen Crowley blocks the rebound, but she got called for a handball in the box resulting in a red card for Crowley. She's not happy, and take a look. It appears she was right, that one's off her hip, but on the resulting penalty kick for Virginia, Alex Schaffer buries that goal. Cavaliers ecstatic, they'd hang on for the 1-0 win behind Schaffer's eighth goal of the season. We'll get you back out to Seattle in just a minute, but first, stick around for your sports report update. Kate Rooney back in the San Francisco studios with your Pac-12 Sports Report update. For Bay Area football fans, the name McCaffrey is a familiar one. And if last night is any indication, one you're going to keep hearing for quite some time. Christian McCaffrey coming off a huge game against UCLA, leading his number 10 Stanford Cardinal against Washington. In the second quarter, Stanford up 7-0. McCaffrey runs it up the middle, cuts right, takes it 19 yards inside the five. That one would lead to a Ramond Wright rush touchdown to put the Cardinal up 14. On to the third quarter, Stanford up 17-7. McCaffrey, a 50-yard touchdown catch. Stanford goes up 24-7. McCaffrey, 100 receiving yards for the first time in his career. On the next possession, same score. McCaffrey rushes left, takes it in for a 7-yard touchdown. Stanford wins this one 31-14. McCaffrey had 221 total yards from, from scrimmage. Glenn Parker. Pick McCaffrey is his Heisman frontrunner a couple weeks ago. Watch Sports Report tomorrow night to see what else he has to say. Plus a full rundown of the week in Pac-12 sports with Ashley Adamson and Mike Yam. Up next, the rest of the Rain coming down like the Dickens in Seattle. We're at Husky Soccer Field where fourth-ranked Stanford and Washington have played to a scoreless tie as halftime winds down. Paul Ratcliffe, head coach of the Cardinal, joining us. Coach, your message to the club at halftime was what? We need to be more assertive in the final third. Uh, I thought our build-up play was, was good, but in the final third we need to be more assertive, establish our target play, and then also find the width and get behind them uh, on the outsides. Yeah, Paul, it seemed as though you were keeping things pretty wide early on, but they started to pressure a little bit as well. Did you did you feel that way also? I felt like the Huskies really started to come at your players a little bit more. Yeah, I know they're a very good team, um, so we have to be careful of you know going forward too much. But uh, at the same token, I think we can create some chances if we're more aggressive in the final third and, and go after them 1v1 and some combination plays. And, Paul, did the players ask you what this wet stuff was coming out of the sky? I'm just curious. I haven't seen yeah, much no, that in the a, Bay Area. A beautiful, it's a beautiful <laughs> Seattle night. We're enjoying it. Uh, well put, Paul. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Diplomacy. Thank you, Coach. Good luck the rest right, of the thanks way. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, thank That's you. Paul Radcliffe, head coach of the Stanford Cardinal. And some interesting scores from around the league. USC still keeping pace. Yeah, they are. You know, the Colorado is a team that really feels like they aren't quite where they should be. And then for USC, they come in and make sure that they got that win against the Buffs. But everybody else, just one goal wins. It was mm. really uh, just, it's impressive. What, what the teams are doing and it's still 
makes you wonder if somebody can go on a run. Three matches left for everybody to finish off the regular season. How many teams will make it in? Cal with that huge victory in Pullman over Washington State. So a look at the standings complete up into our game. And I'm telling you, if, if USC and Stanford lock horns, well, they are next week. That's yeah. going to be something. Well, and what's going to happen here? If Stanford doesn't doesn't end up getting a yep. win here, they'll be tied up with USC. That will be a big one. And the RPIs, as you mentioned, a lot of teams, at least in that top 30, that's what's going to be key coming down. But again, three matches could make a difference. So we're underway in the second half here in Seattle. The hometown Huskies in their white kits. White head to toe and Stanford with the ball in their road kits black stem to stern those RPI numbers are huge Krista you know we saw nine of our conference clubs make it to the NCAA tournament last year there's no postseason tournament you've got the regular season champ but that shows the depth of this conference and it'll be interesting to see how many get in this year yeah it definitely does I'd love to see another team make a run and, and push their way into the NCAA tournament it could happen but it'll be interesting to see how teams finish up as far as yep. those schedules go we took a little bit of a look Washington has to go on the road at Oregon State and Oregon and finish with Washington State Stanford gets USC UCLA and Cal Wow so the team that we really felt that might make a push was Arizona State potentially and and for them, though, we're not sure if they if they get the wins and finish strong. With They'll have both Colorado, Utah, and then they will also have Arizona to finish up. But if they can win out, will it push their RPI up enough to get them in? They are possible. That's the question. Clearly, Arizona State, a team that has gotten healthy because Farkasin is healthy, mm -hmm. but they're going to need to run the table. Farkasin with the game winner today. And Arizona State narrowly picking up the win against Oregon and they had to play a player down when Lucy Lara went down with the red card the last mm. 43 minutes of regulation and still post the one nil victory thanks to Farkasen's PK kick that's an important one Harris saving the day there. Mariah Lee getting the start for the Cardinal out on the right flank. And I love her play. She had her first goal of her career in their win against Colorado a couple of matches ago. <laughs> and the coaching staff kept telling the sophomore, it's coming. It's yes. coming. And they kind of kidded her a little bit, but maybe that will kind of unleash, you know, the, the, the Mariah Lee that is capable of, of scoring. I think she's a very dangerous player. Oh, she's so powerful. They list her at 5'4". She is one strong player. So, again, it's Stanford pushing the issue inside the 18. Kufeld. As that ball was kind of chilly dipped a little bit there. Kufeld coming off her line. There's Ali Braz and the strength of the back line. And really a, a big plus for a player like Kufeld in the box to know that you got players like that in front of you. And good to see McGrady out there. She went down with a big collision in the first half, but they got her back. Here's McGrady on the corner. Punched away by Kufeld. Stanford on the reload again that shot blocked sent out to midfield Dume Neal starting for the Huskies the freshman this second half Leslie Gallimore wanted possession quality passes we'll see if the team is able to do just that against a very stubborn Stanford defense yeah, I guess we shouldn't be surprised when we spoke with her prior to the halftime and when she talked about we have to hold on to the ball, we have to keep the ball. That's what she was going to talk about. And we talked about that, that you that's bet. the difference and had been the difference in the first half between Stanford and Washington was how cleanly Stanford played with their passing and that the Huskies had given it up a little too much. Nice shot of McIlvain, who was banged up, a little dinged up to end the first half. She was slow to get up and get to the sideline on the final seconds of that opening period so nice to see her back hopefully at full strength Bonflasha commits the foul and there is Mariah Lee just stepping in and she drew the contact yes, I actually right. thought it was going to go against her and instead it's the other way around you are the aggressor and you test out the officials see how they're going to play steps in a little hip check I don't know. I don't know how I would have blown that whistle, but she was the aggressor. She wins the point. You know, you're right. She took the angle away from Bon Flasha, and it results 
in an attempt by Stanford that goes awry, but still the giveaways and the lack of buildup from Washington has kept the ball where Stanford wants it. I like this movement and energy, though, by the defense of the Huskies Me right too. now. They are at least forcing Stanford to think maybe just a little bit more than they did early on in this one. Von Flasha steps in nicely, but at some point, unless you're willing to settle for a tie, you've got to get something going the other way. Yeah, you're right. You've got to move it forward, and you can't just keep forcing the D to step up in every opportunity. You need to force Stanford to play a little defense. Von Flasha with that heroic effort in the first half to deny Stanford. Great cutback there. Oh, it reflected, or excuse me, deflected off of a Stanford player. That was unlucky. That's a break for the Huskies, and yeah, it was Jordan DiBiase, one of the talented freshmen for the Cardinal. She's got a good leg, and what a cutback. Just mm. threw everybody off defensively, but her teammate gets in the way just a little bit, deflects it out, and gives it back to the Huskies. DiBiase, uh, you mentioned, just it's, it's hard to keep listing off the freshmen that just keep on coming up with big-time minutes and plays. Kiever steps over that one and decides to let the throw in tell the tale. So here's McIlvain. 51st minute here in Seattle. The rain has been relentless and very steady. And yet both of these teams have kept pretty good footing. It's good possession by the Huskies working it back through their back line now. A little more patience. Karras, that anchor. They call it collar jammer as we look at some stats that decidedly favor the Cardinal. It definitely does. The shots advantage for Stanford. No shots on goal for the Huskies. Four for the Cardinal. And the Huskies whistled for a few more fouls. Yep. But I think you have to play aggressively and take some chances within reason. You don't obviously want to intentionally hurt anybody. But I think against a team like Stanford, you've got to make them think a little. So let's see if the Huskies can get something going here. Dume Neal trying to carry and does. Villanueva just into space, nobody there. I'm seeing Shannon Simon, 15 for the Huskies with a little more movement. We've not really mentioned her team. She's a leading scorer for Washington. I'm starting to see her moving without the ball. She's going to the ball. She's moving into gaps, and she's calling for it and talking to her teammates. They need her to be more active. Leads this club with six goals. And there she is right there. Turning the corner. That shot blocked. Unfortunate there. Kind of a flyer by Simon. Dume Neal, though, has been really in the mix since getting the second half starting nod. Yeah, definitely. And trying to make the turn, Dume Neal couldn't get it. Simon picking up the scraps, but gets underneath it too much. And you saw Campbell's reaction. She was definitely saying something to her defense, not happy with that last sequence. That's something that has really come on for Jane Campbell in her game and her confidence in her junior years, her vocal leadership. She really talks to her team much more than a couple of years past. Just a junior is Campbell. Coming to Stanford as one of the most decorated keepers in the U.S. youth systems. All the way from Kennesaw, Georgia. Boy, she has been terrific for them. They've had some great keepers. Obviously, yeah. Ratcliffe has had so many quality keepers. Same with Gallimore. And, and, and Campbell is as good as it gets. Yeah, she definitely is. Got some looks in her freshman season and became the starting keeper because of injury. Yep. And just took over from there. You start playing on national team play and, and so many of the players from both of these sides part of World Cup teams you name it but the national level of play makes such a difference in their confidence in particular when they step down the pitch at this level in the Pac-12. Yeah, when, when, when Campbell was 17 she becomes the youngest keeper to ever be called into a full U.S. national camp. Chew yeah. on that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's something. It's a good combination play by Stanford. Finding the feet again. 
So impressed, though, near that 18, Washington's defense. They bend a little, but they don't break. Yeah. But Stanford just possesses and, and just keeps the hammer down. Villanueva coming up with it. Stanford will not quit on the play. Mariah Lee facing three and four defenders and still able to keep the ball at her feet. It's just such a clean play. Lee with the left foot. Lee with the left foot. And again, bouncing off of Kufeld's hands, but not letting the rebound opportunity fall at Stanford's feet. Yeah, and it's a good thing because Tegan McGrady for the Cardinal was right there. Big lefty leg, follows it all the way across and just getting her timing and footing because McGrady right there. You make a mistake, the Cardinal will make you pay. Well, and gosh, uh, this Washington club actually let Lee carry that ball into a, a, a space where she could unleash the left-footed rocket. Well, they'd already thrown four or five players at her, and she got around them. I guess they just said, go ahead. You know, you. I know you really like the play of this Lee kid, and yeah. obviously earned the start the second half. She could be a difference maker in this. Yeah, she can be. Switching points of attack, but the turnover will allow the counter happen for Washington. Stepping over nicely is Dume Neal. She'll go down. The whistle blows. Well played. This is a Washington team that has good balanced scoring and it's something that's really helped this team focus. So every player feels as though it's their responsibility and, and there's not really one superstar. And that's, that's what makes them tough yep. to defend. If you're Stanford, you never know who's going to get the game winner for Washington. So you got to play everybody really as if they are the main go-to. And that was Kiever, my bad, who again will make her presence felt. Interesting free kick here for the Huskies here in the 57th minute, Krista. Yeah, this is this is going to be interesting to see what they decide to do. I'm assuming that they will go long, but we'll see who drops into the box as the target. The dummy. Boy, redirected. Yeah. And just a little flick, but didn't have the pace to fool Campbell. So Simon took off, she didn't go for it, and then it gets redirected. And these are the kinds of plays that can throw a keeper off and Campbell able to keep her footing and stay with it. I like the idea of the low line drive service. Yeah, those are scary. If you're Stanford on those, that's excellent positioning to, to run that play. Lee again, taking on two defenders. Keeping the ball alive, well played. Sullivan. Working against Simon. Look at Sullivan. She has one of the best cutbacks. I, she will use that play so often. And they list her at 5'7", but she has a much taller, bigger presence to me than that. That shot wide here in the 58th minute. Still scoreless. As Rosen would like to have that one back. Yeah. Guess who? Haley Rosen, that... Fifth year senior, she is the lone player left from the 2011 National Championship team. Talk about experience. Just so happy that she is healthy because she you has bet. been banged up so many. Six matches, hurt for three. She had three starts in 2013 last year. Did play significant minutes, six starts for her, uh, but not completely healthy, but still able to get out there and only played 12 the year before that. Cutting back. Dume Neal, beautiful. Oh, the cross was right there, but nobody to receive it. Still, the Huskies on the attack. Oh, boy. Dume Neal with a beautiful service. Yeah, just one Husky compared to three defenders that got back for Stanford, but that was a beautiful cross if there had just been one other Husky coming in. Making that run, yeah. huh? Yeah. They'll break that down when it comes to game tapes, and it was just a perfectly laid ball, but nobody there. Better patience by the Huskies, better spacing for them, and now they get an opportunity here, Enough putting enough pressure on the Cardinal to force them to kick this one out and give it right back. You see Walker Hartshorn stretching on the sidelines for Ratcliffe and his Cardinal bunch. There she is wearing number eight. Victory is very hard to come by for Washington against this Stanford club. The last one happening in 2004. The only other one in 2000. I mean, you just you just don't see it happen very often, no, do you? You definitely don't. 
They've had one draw over their longtime series of playing one another. Okay. There you see yeah, it. There Stanford you go. dominating. Yep. 28th meeting all time. Or two draws, rather. This would be big for so many reasons for Washington to be able to get this one. Shoot, everybody in the conference is pulling for the Huskies right now. And I mean everybody, especially SC. <laughs> yeah, they're just you know a game they back in the loss column, having won today. Southern Cal just having a terrific season. And these two teams meet on Thursday, our game of the week. Oh, baby. Stanford was picked to win the Pac-12, first in the preseason. The Huskies picked seventh. And just some interesting, uh, mm -hmm. I don't, you can't go by those polls. If you don't even want to bring it up to the coaches, they don't even want to talk about it. And there it is, finally in the 61st minute, a very patient Stanford club just whittles away, whittles away, and finds the back of the net in a driving rain. The celebration you know is felt all the way back in Palo Alto. Back to the goal, and it's unselfish play just stepping in. I believe it was DiBiase for the Cardinal. So one to nothing in the 61st minute. DiBiase with her second goal of the season, and again, it was a very patient attack that used the width and then use the openings. And I believe, you know, for Kufeld, she was probably blocked a little bit because I wasn't quite sure who had their back to the goal for Stanford, but she also had a defender directly behind her and another Husky defender and blocking Kufeld a little bit. And so they tipped it right into DiBiase who moved into the open space. And I just think Kufeld got blocked out on that one. So in the 61st minute, DiBiase's second goal of the year gives the fourth-ranked Stanford Cardinal the 1-0 victory. And we know this, when Stanford scores first, they don't lose. <laughs> still time, though. There oh, is sure. still time. Oh, sure. But oh, there's a uh... cue. <laughs> I mean, that's impressive, though. This is a team that uh, loves to be a front runner and doesn't give the lead back once they establish the lead. That's impressive stuff. Yeah, you want to see a team now kind of draw things back and really spread it out and work that clock. And I mean, they obviously know they, they would love to have another score to give that padding and that cushion, but uh, they're not just going to lay down and not do anything, but they will really take their time now. Stanford with so many scoring opportunities in that first half and finally breaking through and we said this earlier, 11 different players have scored for Stanford and now 21 of their 29 goals from a freshman or a sophomore. DiBiase getting another one. And how about every single freshman on the team having at least one game-winning goal? I mean, they are stepping up in big-time plays. Even Paul Radcliffe told us, he said, I thought there would be a few more hiccups with this group. I know they were the top recruit class, but they're you know, still coming in. But they have really surpassed where they thought they'd be. And here comes Stanford again, nearing that 18 and getting in. The left foot blocked. Stanford will reload. Lee knocked off her perch, but still maintains. That was Walker Hartshorn for Stanford. She loves to turn and come back to her left. So excellent defense reading that, just not giving her any option to turn that way. And let's see how Washington reacts now. After dodging a lot of bullets, Krista, let's see if they can get their offense going. Yeah, this is where Stanford now has a little more momentum, and if you're Washington, maybe a little deflated, but they're continuing to pressure. I like they're coming out and still making Stanford think. Me too. Turning is Lee. She'll take on the double and leaves it beautifully done, and there's the second goal of the match in the 63rd minute. And that's all Mariah Lee making that happen. She's that energy boost. She's that kind of player that will come in. It's the counterattacks. These are the things that hurt Washington when they had the loss against Arizona State. It's the counter, and Mariah Lee started it, but the finish was Haley Rosen. We talked about Haley Rosen in the open and how she is enjoying a healthy and spectacular season. But there's Mariah Lee, the sophomore, who absolutely took on the double, kept her head up, and who made the run but Rosen? That's right. 
excellent combination and unselfish play by Stanford. Fifth goal on the year for the red shirt senior. Stanford looking very much like a top five team this evening in some pretty nasty conditions. Steady and heavy rain in Seattle. But Stanford has been the aggressor since the beginning. Shut out in the first half, but two quick goals here, Krista. 2-0, Cardinal. Uh, they do that so often, and it's hard to not be deflated a bit when you've held your own for so long and against a team like Stanford and then they score. It's hard not to let yourself come down just a little bit. All right, so the obvious question is you can't get both goals back at once. And not very many scoring opportunities for this Washington club. club. How do you change that against this defense? Well, they try to go a little more direct right there, and then they lose it out of bounds. You still have to take care of the ball, but we might see them play a little more direct, continue that pressure. It's really, for me, their pressure, and, and they've been able to take it away more. And, and here's an opportunity here, but taking care of that ball, that's the difference. And maybe the speed and direct play of a hedge or a keever or a Dume Neal, perhaps maybe that is the answer. I don't know. Trying to lead Rachel Wheeler there, and they will get it back. And there's an opportunity to trap. They do it, and they get the ball back. So taking advantage, again, reading the D, what's it giving them? So DiBiase in the 61st minute, and then Rosen in the 63rd minute, and that's where we stand at Husky Soccer Field. See right there, a pass off the mark for the Huskies out. They have an opportunity in their attacking third, but right here, add some pressure, get it back. Karras is going to leave it for Hedge, a little firm on that touch, but it'll be a Husky throw-in. This offense for Washington needs to feel good about something, and there's no time like the present. they got to get something on frame against Campbell. Yeah. McIlvain with a little chip inside the 18. Like the idea of Wheeler trying to get ahead on it. Little miscue on that back line. Yeah. It looked like Jane Campbell had it, and it would just be hers to throw back in, and instead they hand over a corner to the Huskies. You don't see that very often. Set pieces have been very good for the Washington Husky club this season. That's how they beat Cal off the set piece. Yeah. Here's a straight corner. Let's see what they can do. Clear everybody out, and a driver right there. Hedge with the right idea. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a great shot. You know, she turned, she's got the leg to do it, and that was close. That's a tough angle for Jane Campbell to try to cut off. Take another look and, yeah, just miscommunication, right. and that was Maddie Bauer, the junior defender who Got in the way, put up that corner opportunity, and now we're seeing the Huskies down in there attacking third a little bit more. And it's a matter of hanging on to it, maybe getting one out. If they, if they can get one goal here, it changes the mentality completely. Do you take a few more chances than you normally would if you're Washington? Probably so. You know, we saw we saw Hedge turn maybe a little further out than you might think that she would, but she's capable. And when you don't see very many chances, when you finally see that opening, I think you do. Why not? And what I'm going to be interested in seeing. Krista is the mentality of this Husky group to play as if this game is still tied. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the sense of urgency. That's what Gallimore is going to look at right now, too. And I, I, I can't help but think that Stanford is going to be relentless to try to get that third one on the board. Yeah. I yeah. like the offense. Yeah, they will not stop. That is for certain. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I do like the effort right now by the Huskies. We were seeing them down in there attacking third more. They're still being aggressive. They didn't have the counter, and now they're not hanging their heads. So they've got a little bit of a, a tougher hill to climb. But not hanging the heads, still coming out aggressively. You know, it's not often that Washington gives up two goals in a game. It, and certainly not three. Yeah. We talk about how Stanford kind of hangs its hat on never giving yeah. up three goals or yeah, more. Yeah, they don't. But this Washington club has been very stingy with the goals as well. Giving up the goals, I should say. 
So it'll be interesting to see if they can come back and make a game of it because there's still plenty of time on the clock. There absolutely is, and what a big leg right there. <laughs> McIlvain, huh? Wow. That's impressive. Wow, that's Bon Flasher. That's bon Flasher. Yeah. A sophomore out of Laguna Niguel. Trying to cut the, into the lead on her own. There's a turnover, and here comes Lee and company. Yeah, that pass just too long. Lee has been such a spark plug. Here's Lee. McIlvain and Lee going shoulder to shoulder on that play. Yeah, trying to get a corner. That's something that Mariah Lee does very well, draws contact, and now Stanford's going to go to the sideline, get some fresh legs. Megan Turner coming onto the pitch for the first time. Zhao, who's been pretty quiet this, this match, re-entering the game. Smiles on the faces for the Stanford yeah. Cardinal players coming out. DiBiase and, you know, what, the, the goal by DiBiase to get this thing going really set the table for that second goal. Yeah, they didn't hesitate, didn't wait nope. very long to turn around and get nope. the second. That's where they make their push quite often, and that's where you can get teams when they're down. It's, it's, uh, it's a prime time. Here's McGrady again, a great shot to show you the rainy conditions. <laughs> get on the seer. Yeah. A bender right there. Kufeld punches the header right into Kufeld's arms. Ooh, number three almost on the board for Stanford. Great defense by Kufeld in the box. Has to punch this. It doesn't make its way out off the shoulder, and she followed it the entire way. And good hustle by the Cardinal. They are moving, doing everything they could, stepping in to try to extend this lead. You know, the third goal at this point in the match basically puts this baby to bed. Yeah. But there's, you know, again, we're at the 71-minute mark. Washington, obviously, with a sense of urgency to get back in it. They sure can't give up the third goal, that's for sure. Yeah. Jermaine Neal is going to come back in for the Huskies. There's Maddie Kinzer. Yeah. And only her second game, the transfer out of Oklahoma, gets the nod. Very fresh legs, or should be. Yeah. She did some really good things with the Sooners. I thought maybe she'd get some more minutes. But here she is in a big-time match against Stanford. Yeah, started all but one match in two years at Oklahoma. And there's a long shot that Jane Campbell was able to pick up. Frankly, Campbell just hasn't really been tested at this yeah. point. Not as much. Crowd's still hanging in there. They're yeah. not giving up yet. This Look game's still people. plenty of time. I think they've missed the rain. It hasn't been quite as much rain in Seattle this year. Oh, this area is due, that's for sure. Yeah. I think Stanford would have preferred it to happen tomorrow morning. <laughs> but they got to be loving the lead, that's yeah. for sure. 2 nil, 72nd minute. Both goals for Stanford coming in the second half, and they're looking for more. And that one from far out. And the Huskies trying to decide what they're willing to give up. And that time they let Maddie Bauer make her way all the way up from the center back spot. And... So you mentioned the, the remaining games for both of these clubs. And, and just a, a reminder, it's going to be really interesting for mm -hmm. this Stanford bunch. USC, UCLA, and Cal to finish things off. The good news is all of them at home. Yeah, that's a big plus. They just don't lose much on their home pitch. But that is some stiff competition coming in. And for Cal, obviously not so far away. Just across the bay. You bet. Washington, meanwhile, at Oregon State, at Oregon, as you told our viewers, 
earlier this evening and then finishing against Washington State. That game could have a lot yes. at stake. Yeah, trying to figure out, you know, who's going to, not only how many teams will make it into the tournament, who gets to play on their home pitch, yep. who gets to stay home and host. Flag finally goes up as Carusa battles the defender. Nicely played there by the youngster to draw the foul. Yeah, Kira Caruso, the redshirt freshman. Redshirted last season. Really finally starting to find her groove, Paul Radcliffe told yep. us. She's kind of a player that doesn't get a, a lot of credit sometimes, but he said she's kind of that player that connects the attack and brings it all together at times. You saw the impressive numbers, goals and assists. Yeah. Good shot there of the youngster and a free kick opportunity for Stanford. Ball slips out of Kufeld's hands again. Yeah, we figured that this rain would eventually catch up some way, and it has to be getting pretty slick out you there, I would think. Those big mitts couldn't hang on to it. Tough ball to corral, too. It was a very tough angle, and she knew she had a Stanford player right behind her, and so instead of trying to bobble it in the box, just at least get it out of there. Good call. Boy, I love that run Boy. coming in, just, just zipping right across the six. Yeah, how scary is that slow shot? And how about yeah. the play there of Maddie Bauer making sure she gets a corner, another opportunity? Just smart, just really intelligent play by the Stanford club. That was a really dangerous corner from the near side. Now Stanford will give it a whack from the far side corner. Bauer wants the ball. And yeah, she throw wanted it. My bad. Ah, so didn't have the corner just to throw in. Thought they had the corner. So did I. I think I started that chain right there. No, I thought... My bad. <laughs> I thought it's they did bad. too. <laughs> I'll take that one. All I know is Stanford <laughs> is just setting up camp in their offensive third. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. I thought so too, so yeah, I'm with thank you. thank you. All right. Team player. Appreciate that. Heck yeah. McGrady. Just a chip shot by McGrady. That is an exposed net. And Kufeld comes out, gives her teammates no chance, and that is a freebie for Stanford. And everybody getting a good la laugh as Cook gets the easiest goal of her year. I am really surprised that Kufeld came out on this one as far as she did. I think she felt like she had enough of her defenders back to protect the goal for her, but... I don't think it was necessary for her to come out at this time. But again, she's got to make that decision in a, pl in a split second. And that's a tough break for the Huskies, but a big time play. How about another freshman? Do I need to go through the numbers again? Yes, because you now, do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you 22 do. of the 30 goals scored by the Cardinal have been by a freshman or a sophomore. Second goal of the wow. season for Cook. You mentioned it. The freshman doing the job. She's been a full-time starter for Ratcliffe yeah. and just has not disappointed. You know, she she gets on these national youth teams and picks up all that great experience. So one of those freshman kids that come in, hitting the ground running. Yeah, absolutely. And she just, she has speed. She has a presence about her on the back line. And does so many things so well. High school scholar, player of the year last year coming in. So she's doing good things off the pitch too. Well, you love it when you're one of your better defenders is able to find the back of the net and that was easy pickings for Cook. You could see the celebration by her teammates yeah. also because when teams allow their back lines to come up and be part of the attack or especially off the set pieces they know how hard they work and they don't always get a lot of credit or a lot of love back there so they get a score and everybody's happy for them. It's the first time all season that Washington has given up three goals, Krista. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it because they have a very good back line and they experienced do. back line and an excellent keeper in the box. No question. So remember, this was a match that was scoreless at halftime, but three second-half goals by this Stanford team shows you why they're ranked so high in the country and why they're perched atop this conference.
Yeah, they they definitely are confident. They feel teams out. They're patient. They make sure that they set the tone and the spacing. And the Huskies tried to fluster them some and did a pretty nice job with some of their pressure. But the coaching staff for the Cardinal now getting a little too physical as I think it was Kelsey Hedge, yeah, coming over, helping Michelle Zhao up. Two talented freshmen mm, facing nice. each other. That's nice. Siobhan Cox getting into the game for Paul Ratcliffe. Avery Collins as well, I believe. She with those heroics against Washington State in double overtime just the other night. Yeah. There's Kelsey Hedge. So if this score stands, and there's no reason to think that a team like Stanford, who once, if they score first, they haven't lost all year. Yeah. And you look at the score right now, and it's definitely in favor of Stanford. Is this a horribly deflating setback for Washington? Or does Leslie, in, in her way, just keep the heads up and say, hey, it's one match, we still keep moving forward? They will absolutely keep their heads up. You know, there, there's so much at stake still. And, uh, you know, a, a very solid win against the 14th ranked you Cal bet. Bears to start this weekend. And so I think coming into this one, you'd love to get two wins, obviously. But I think if you split with the Bay Area teams, two ranked teams, then I think you're probably feeling pretty good. I think they'll be down on themselves some. And she said that as well. Uh -huh. She has to keep their heads up because they are such a competitive team in these individual players. Uh, they, they'll be hard on themselves. They all feel like it's on them and mm -hmm. like you mentioned they don't have one go-to so everybody takes the responsibility of this team so Kiever out Sir Wild in for Washington yeah I'm, I'm with you and, and she's got uh, you know Gallimore is as good as any coach uh, men's or women's in any sport in terms of keeping her kids loose having fun understanding it's just a game and we'll get it back yeah they, they this is a team they said that they're having a good time with them. That's the deepest Washington has gotten, yeah. and they're still coming at Campbell. A nice sequence there by the Huskies. Yeah. Not a bad time either after Stanford still maybe celebrating a little bit. And wow, deep into the box, getting in behind everybody. And that time there, Bon Flasha tried the second attempt. A couple of bang-bang shots by Washington that we have not seen so far tonight. But we're in the 81st minute, Krista. This Husky team has great chemistry, though. That's something that has been a big plus for this group. And it kind of started after last season when they made it to the third round of the tournament and ended up losing to Stanford. But kind of started great chemistry with that group, kind of putting it together and now just bleeding over to this season. But, you know, sometimes you get to that midway point of the of the year and it can become a grind. And the coaching staff for the Huskies says, not a grind with this group. You bet. It's good times. You know, it was an interesting moment for, a couple of interesting moments for this Stanford group when they lost at home to Penn State. And then the setback at Santa Clara 1-0, and that was September 20th. Mm -hmm. And since then, they have just righted the ship and have gotten after it and have set the tone once again as far as conference play is concerned. I think, you know, it's, when we've talked to coaches so often, as much as you're glad to be an undefeated team, and right now in conference play that they're undefeated, Paul Radcliffe will take those two losses, especially in non-conference play, because that's where you learn. That's where you figure some things out. And, uh, you know, when we talked to uh, the associate head coach, Amy Griffin, for the Huskies, she said their loss against Arizona State, that was eye-opening for this team. Okay. And we saw how they regrouped against Cal, their yep. next match. They yep. went back. She said, you never look to the silver lining unless you're dissatisfied about something. And they were dissatisfied about a few things after the loss against the Sun Devils. And I think uh, Stanford taking a page out of that book because they were not themselves at home against Penn State. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. I mean, Penn State roughed them up pretty good 2-0. Yeah. And that was a terrific match against Santa Clara and, you know, kind of up for grabs. And since then, they learned and they haven't lost. Yeah. I, and I, I think a lot of it, it starts with their head coach, Paul Ratcliffe, and his calming presence. He, just, he is very much... 
doesn't worry about the wins and losses. It's all about improvement. Every practice, every match, what do we need to work on? He's very good at breaking things down. What do they need to work on? Where are, Where's the focus? These are two of the best coaches oh. in the nation for certain. No question. The youngsters for this Stanford club, as Lee goes flying, you, you keep mentioning the numbers in terms of the freshman and sophomore accounting to, uh, accounting for so many of the Cardinal goal as Lee goes down. It takes a lot to take out Mariah Lee. Uh -huh. She is so strong, and that time it was Maddie Kinzer. Oh, and they're going to give the yellow to Kinzer on that one. She definitely cut up under Mariah Lee, and Mariah Lee, she's one tough player. She started the second half, did Lee, and has been very instrumental in this blitzkrieg by the Cardinal in the second half with the three goals. And this is an interesting situation for Kufeld and company because Stanford wants some more. Yeah, they're not going to stop. That is for certain. You execute and you find the back of the net. That's your job. Miss hit there, that's for sure. Wow. So lots of folks getting playing time tonight in the driving rain at Husky Soccer Field. Walker Hartshorn back on the pitch for Stanford. She was stretching like crazy. Yeah. Glad to see her back in as Hedge takes a seat. Kat Anasini back in for the Huskies. Yeah, Mariah Lee gets a, gets a rest. I know you want the playing time, but in a chilly night like this with some rain, I don't know, I might want to... <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why I'm not playing anymore. Come on, Chris Block. <laughs> Come on now. I'm getting Am I getting lazy in my old age? <laughs> I think I am. Kufeld's going to just be kicking herself for that third goal that she yeah. gave up coming off the line. And that'll be a learning experience for her, too. I, I, I get it. She's a redshirt senior, but still learning her craft. And that was a mistake that she knows is on her. Yeah, she's probably harder on herself than anybody's going to be. And they'll just have to make sure that they don't let her dwell on it. you got to move forward. These next three matches oh, so important. They will hit the road, face Oregon State first. They're a scary team to me for certain. And I don't. you can't look past the Oregon Ducks either. They are a much improved team. And then they come back home, and it doesn't get any easier with Washington State. Mm, mm, mm. That's going to be a blast. Yeah. 3-0, fourth-ranked Stanford. All three goals coming in the second half, and we're in the 85th minute here. And basically, Stanford now looking to complete the clean sheet. They want that for Campbell in a bad way. Yeah, they do. Campbell's got the five shutouts already this season. Goodness sake, last year she had 14 of them. Man. Really something. All-time leader. Not too far away for her. Just a junior, too. Yeah. Wow. Kufeld already the all-time leader in shutouts. Yep, passing Hope Solo. Yeah. This is probably, to me, when I look at road trips for these teams, coming to Washington and Washington State, I think the toughest road trip out there this season, other than maybe the Bay Area for other teams coming uh, to see Cal and Stanford, uh, there are no gimmies and there are no easy trips. But uh, this year, because UCLA may be down just a little bit, Southern California uh, playing very, very well, that's not an easy trip. But I do think that Washington State, mm. Washington, it's one of the toughest, if, uh, to me, the toughest trip out there. So if you're Stanford and you come out of this with two Ooh. wins, that's big time. You know, a double overtime. That's the other thing. Double overtime at Washington State with some travel to have to come in then and play Washington. Uh, really, hats off to just keeping the fresh legs out there and executing. This will be an impressive victory, an impressive weekend, a Thursday-Sunday deal for this Stanford club. Beautiful through ball. Nobody there, though, as Kufeld boots it. You know, those altitude trips are never easy. <laughs> but Colorado and Utah, you know, banged up and or not playing very well. 
you, you know, you, you get, you, you just hope you've got the fresh legs to deal with the altitude and the, and the flights. Yeah. But yeah, I'm with you on the Washington, Washington State trip. Well, that's true. And the, you know, Colorado, those teams are scary this time of year, too. We talked about Arizona State is a potential team to maybe make a run, but they're going to have to get through those two teams. And um, those teams have nothing to lose at this point and have maybe not happy with where they've been. I know Utah's been banged up. I think, I think Colorado not happy, obviously, with what their record is right now. So they want to be a spoiler this time of year. You know, UCLA and Arizona State, coming into the weekend we're in the 80s as far as RPI is concerned both of those clubs absolutely have to run the table in order to get the nod for the big dance big tournament coming up that starts very very soon they've got to run the table and that's a tall order it is for you for UCLA oh, they go to the Bay Area they're gonna face yep. Cal and Stanford and they're gonna finish with USC yeah. who's been red hot and remember USC and Stanford play next Thursday we'll have that for you Stanford only up by one in the loss column against the Trojans. Uh -huh. Kadani McAlpine and USC, really, they're a fun team they to are. watch because they're a little more possession style than they have been, but they are full blast, fast pace, and they still look to play a little direct at times. They're, they're really fun to watch. How good of a match is that going to be on Thursday? Yeah, it's going to be fun. I hope I'm there. I think I am. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, but I believe I believe I'm going to be there, Ann. I'd like for you to know a little bit with more <laughs> certainty. I know. If I'm there, Ann. Just go to the right place, Krista. <laughs> okay, we've been talking about the remaining schedule, yes. and, and when you look at it on paper, it looks even more daunting, it doesn't really it? It really does. It does. It absolutely Stanford's does. Stanford's got some tough matches, man. Boy. And the NCAA tournament begins November. I think that's where everything just blows my mind of where we are with just three matches left. And I think the coaches say the same thing. They yep. can't believe how fast conference play is going. Man. Now, and, and remember, check as to where you're supposed to be. If there's anything I can do to help you. <laughs> I'll be there. My goodness. I'll be there. Just a block. <laughs> I'll, I'll start. I'm, I'm going to start my prep on the ride home. Will you do that? There's a lot going on right now, Ann. It's exciting. It's, all the sports start to overlap, and it's it's it is fun. Yeah, it is. Second half of Pac-12 volleyball is starting, getting ready to start. We are winding down. Pac-12 play here in soccer. You got football going on, and basketball is kicking in very very soon. Believe it or not. I hear you. That madness stuff is just around the corner. It is. It? Yeah. All right, we're winding down here in Seattle. The stands were packed for most of yeah. this game. And, and I'll tell you, the faithful had some hope when this score was, yeah. well, there wasn't one at halftime. And, and Washington's defense was just, you know, really tough. Every single time Stanford yeah. would make a push, Washington's defense had the answer. But then, boy, a couple of quick goals in the second half, the third goal, an open netter, and here's where we stand. Yeah, you, if you give up that first goal and you don't give up the counter immediately just a couple minutes after, it's a whole different game. But you give up that counter, and boy, that brings you down. And it, it, you understandably so. Sure. So Stanford scores in the 61st minute. DiBiase, 63rd minute. Rosen. And basically, in, a, in essence, it was over. And we're down to the final ticks. Campbell's going to get a clean sheet. Ooh. And a collision in the box with Jane Campbell, but that's it. And she gets up on her own, and a good sign for the Cardinal. And that seals the deal. Fourth-ranked Stanford going to 8-0-0 in conference play with a, an impressive 3 to nothing victory over Washington. Yeah, a bit of a slow start for the Cardinal, but then... They just came on in the second half, and it was the counterattack getting that second goal to me that made the difference. And they are a tough team. They're a balanced team with, a, you know, 11 different players that have scored. They are just as, as tough as the Huskies. But tonight, it was Stanford on the attack. So updated standings, Krista. We're looking at them right hot off the press. There you go. And look at the jumble in the middle. And for Washington, now tied up with UCLA and Arizona, a very good team this year also i do believe i want to see one more team kick it up a notch get that rpi up let's not maybe going to break the record this year but let's get as many in as you can 
So that's a wrap from soggy Seattle. Fourth-ranked Stanford defeating Washington 3-0, capping a great weekend for the Cardinal. For our entire broadcast crew, I'm Ann Schott saying so long from Husky Soccer Field. And as always, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Stanford wins it 3-0. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.